So one of the complaints that I get when I'm teaching SysML to someone um, who doesn't really have a background in UML or other uh, diagram kind of languages is that there are just too many diagrams that they feel like they have to learn uh, up front in order to get productive. And uh, the way I respond to that is to say that, you know, Many of these diagram types, or, uh, or the way that the, the uh, information is represented on the diagrams, is really very similar. And in fact, you really only have to learn a couple of different things about these diagrams in order to become effective. Another thing I really want to point out is you really don't want to use all of these diagrams on your first model. Um, you want to use just those kind of... Um, uh, um, diagrams and build those kind of models that express the concepts that are important to you at the time. Um, just because there is a, a sequence diagram available, it doesn't mean you have to use it um, in order to adequately describe system behavior, for example. Um, let's just start by saying, by looking at, at one of the uh, kinds of diagrams um, that, that can, that if, once you get the fact that they're similar, it can make life easier. For example, we'll look at internal block diagrams and parametric diagrams. They are structured very, very similarly. In fact, they're showing pretty much the same kind of thing. I won't say they're directly interchangeable, but they're very, very close. Those diagrams are all about uh, internal arrangement and connection. I call them diagrams of use. It's how the parts that are on those diagrams are used and how they are connected. These are very easy for anyone who has dealt with, uh, you know, system block diagrams to deal with because they have boxes that are generally nouns that are connected to other boxes that are generally nouns. And, and the connections represent either uh, a binding, equating the two things uh, in terms of a parametric diagram, or a connector in terms of indicating, well, there's something that flows between these two boxes. So that's actually fairly intuitive, and, and it's not a hard threshold to get over. Now, there's some subtleties about, about the differences in these two diagrams, but the overall concept's pretty easy. It's arrangement and connection, and, uh, and that's a fairly simple thing, and, and people don't have any problem with it once they start using it. The next kind of diagram that's kind of interesting to think about is a diagram of definition, which is talking about uh, uh, things like uh, containment, composition, taxonomy. Uh, the diagram you're looking right at now, this, uh, this uh, diagram taxonomy, is in fact a kind of uh, a composition diagram. It's showing these um, white triangles, which represent generalizations. In other words, is a kind of. So I'm showing here a requirements diagram as a kind of system L diagram, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Once you get past the, the basic kind of um, um, relationships you show in this kind of diagram, whether that be composition or containment or, or generalization, all of these diagrams that are in the green circles work exactly the same way. A package diagram, a block definition diagram, and a requirements diagram all work the same way. And in fact, these diagrams are in fact interchangeable. You can show blocks on package diagrams. You can show package di packages on block diagrams. You can show, requ show requirements on either of the other diagrams, right? So the distinction is really academic. It's really only one kind of diagram. Um, but in SysML, the way that we broke up the, uh, the chapters, it addresses um, how requirements, blocks, and packages are represented in separate chapters. Um, but they really use the same kind of diagram when you're talking about containment, composition, and taxonomy. And diagrams of definition are how you define something that gets used someplace else. Okay, so that's only two kinds of diagrams so far. So I'll, I'll extend that to say, well, there's a third kind of diagram that is useful to know right out of the box. Not essential, but useful to know in terms of how someone generally relates to behavior, especially someone who is, is, is uh, familiar with functional, functional decomposition as a system engineering analysis technique, right? Um, that person would, would probably resonate pretty easily with an activity diagram. Now understand activity diagrams have some kind of odd symbols that aren't traditional functional flow bot diagrams, but they map one-to-one with functional flow block diagramming techniques. And so 
it's not a big step to learn how to draw, act, how, to, how to build activity models in SysML if you already know functional flow block diagramming. Uh, if you already know state machines and state machine kind of diagrams and state machine models, then it's almost a no-brainer to build a state machine diagram. The, 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 the um, iconography is almost identical to uh, Harel hierarchical state machines. Um, but most of my um, system engineers that I'm training up on SysML, especially if they've had some traditional um, experience in uh, mill and aerospace, are much more comfortable dealing with functional flow first rather than state machines. And that makes sense. And we'll talk about that when we get into activity diagramming. So my answer here to the complaint that there are too many diagrams is, well, you know, you can do the traditional system engineering kinds of things, building your system block diagrams, your, your, you can building your internal connections, showing how your equations are related to the various properties, um, and even organizing your model and even doing some initial functional analysis with only three kinds of diagrams. And, uh, and that doesn't seem to me to be too, too onerous 